MTD CNC have travelled to Southern Ireland today. We're at Burnside Autosil. The story here is about Victor CNC and Victor Lades. This machine here, would you believe, is 28 years old. It's their oldest machine that they have here in this plant, and it's actually still manufacturing on a daily basis to tight tolerances. I'm going to go and speak with Pat Byrne, who's the managing director. This is obviously their oldest machine, but recently they bought a lot more from Victor CNC. Pat, how many machines have you got in total then from Victor within the group? 105 machines running currently within the group. All the door has been 31 years of age, as I said. Most recent one is the one we're looking at right here now. That's the V's turn 40. A little bit customised for us. Victor, there's a few specials for us on and off as well. So we put this one in just earlier this year. We've interfaces then with our um, in-house mechanical and automated handling system where it's a big plus for us to be able to interface with um, robotics. And we partner ourselves up with ABB there as well. So if we, if we, look, if we took this machine as an example and the first one that, that I've just looked at, the, the older machine, 28 years old, how much have things changed, not just in manufacturing, but for, for Victor as well, do you think? Oh, quite a lot. I suppose the, the range has changed anyway. This is a much larger machine, so year on year, Victor extends the range a little bit more. And we have to encourage them and push them a little bit to do that as well because our product range is getting larger. But more than that, the, the add-on technology, its ability to engrave, its ability to add a third axis and a fourth axis and a fifth axis, that means less handling for us throughout our process. So this machine is able to give us a more complete finished product. Go, go, so, so in terms of your relationship with Victor, what would you say are the, are the real strong points about why you keep investing in their technology? So number one is the life expectancy that we get from their machines. You know, as I said, we have machines 31 years of age. We expect to have our machines working on two shifts and to last 20, 20 years plus. We don't get that from every brand. We get more than that from Victor. We expect the court reliability above all because we run a, 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 a cellularized production system. So if this machine stops, our production cell stops. We can't have that. So we have to have reliability. Uh, we have to have support and backup. So the fact that they're located relatively close to us in the UK, that helps. We can get an overnight delivery of parts if we have. Um, we also need support on our technology because it's not just the machine, it's interfacing with the rest of our equipment and we get support from Victor there as well. Why, why do you think, I mean, we hear this a lot, but the machines do last many, many years as we've seen today. Why do you think that is yourself? Well, the basic structure of the machine and uh, the stability of the machine hasn't changed a lot over the 30 plus years that we've been dealing with Victor. A lot of other brands have made them maybe move a little faster and put on other types of uh, faster movements. But for our industry, we like the rigid, stable machine. And Victor have stuck to that. It's well proven technology and works well. For our industry, that's important. That's why they last. Powerful and heavy, I think, are a couple of words we could use. Now, we're seeing a turning machine here. Just tell us what, what you're actually doing here with this automation. You've obviously got robotics in, involved as well. Yeah, so it, it takes away the, the labor um, input from the man, of course. The robot is the picker and placer, basically. So it picks the product off over there at the far end, where the incoming product installs it into the machine, which allows it to do its first operation. What is that first stop? It's a threading machining to tight tolerances. We'll be down to tolerances here now of 0 0.005, which is significantly different than the old machine, of course, and it's able to hold it. It then takes out the machine and rotates it and presents the second side for the second operation. It again, the robot takes out the product and presents it to a cleaning operation, and then presents the finished product here ready for the next operation, which is welding in our procedure. I've seen an operator here at the moment. He's, he's standing around, but the whole idea is to eliminate him from the process. Well, it, it wouldn't eliminate. It allows him now to go off and look after a second machine and maybe a third machine. He'll come back then, of course, he plays an important role at the setup stage. He plays an important role in monitoring the quality output. So it allows him to have plenty of time for measuring, checking, controlling his paperwork and looking after two or three machines with ease. How many are going through here at one time then? How, how many are you doing in a run? We 
typical batch size would be 50 pieces, but it's capable of uh, doing batch sizes from two up to some hundreds. And, and what are these, Pat? What, what do you do here at Burnside? At, at the end of the day, this will become a part of our final product, which is a hydraulic cylinder, which is used in basically mobile equipment, the likes of forklifts, the likes of personnel lifts, the likes of the, the digging and construction machinery. That's our game. So it's pretty heavy engineering. Yeah, heavy engineering for us. When did you start getting into automation here? Because this is something around the UK we're talking to a lot of engineers about. A lot of people start, still aren't embracing it, but you, you are. When did, it, when did it all start happening for you? We've been automating in our firm for the last 15 years or so. Uh, it started, I'd have to say, with our component manufacturer, which we do in a, another facility. Then it moved into our welding activity because it wasn't a, an attractive environment. We automated that. And then about 10 years ago, we decided to invest in automating the work handling in and out of the CNC machinery. On the Victor side, this is your latest machine. It's, it's a V-turn 40. It's got a big turn in length. You've got the, uh, the sophisticated mill drill capability, haven't you? Yes, exactly. So we call that full C-axis. Tell us briefly about some of the other machines you've got other than the turning as well. Now, of course, the, the benefit of these uh, extra axes and C axes would be that we don't have to go to a second machine. And that's our big push today, to minimize handling, because handling is non-value adding. So we like to purchase machines today that have full capability to start and finish the product. Now, there's lots of other machines on the market, some of them cheaper, some of them even more expensive, and they don't all have that capability. But it's pretty much uh, par for the course today now, of course. But to get the reliability and the longevity along with this new technology is the challenge, of course. It's sounding to me like the integration goes fairly smoothly here with the Victor and the automation. It does now. Because we've been at it, of course, for the last 15 years or so, we have our own in-house now, electronic engineers, mechanical engineers. So we're able to do all of this ourselves with some help and assistance from the Victor and the ABBs of this world. But we basically put the package together in-house ourselves. That gives us a competitive advantage, of course. I suppose it helps with it being a fan at control, uh, enables you to get easy integration, doesn't it? Absolutely, and that's the other plus about the Victor. We only deal with Victor on FANUC interfaces, and all of our machinery is FANUC. We don't like the rest, to be honest with you. So we spoke about the oldest machine, and spoke about the newest. What's in between? What other machines have you got from Victor in amongst that 105? Sure every shape and size you can think of. We have a lot, another big package of machines in another location making all of the small internal component parts. They would be typically running around the shift. Some of them lights out with automation added to them, of course. That's uh, for making component parts. We'd have machining centers, much smaller lathes than this. Uh, this would be the biggest one we'd have. Vertical machining centers, horizontal machining centers, uh, multi-axis uh, lathes. So that's our other large activity. And, and when you say multi-axis, you're talking lathes from Victor with the Y-axis, for example? Absolutely. One of the latest ones we purchased would be complete with C-axis and Y-axis. Again, supporting our philosophy in reducing the, the handling thereafter, to be able to complete the product when we started. And the product, we, we've mentioned a little bit about this one here, but what is the majority of the material content that you're actually manufacturing here within the business? Medium to low carbon steels, with some exception to that. Some of our challenges would be induction hardened materials and higher grade materials but the Victor seems to be well able to handle it anyway you just change the cutting speeds and we have to change our cutting tools quite a bit then maybe to ceramics and diamond etc. Give me uh, to, to conclude this give me a couple of couple of uh, sentences about your business about Burnside Auto Seal you've mentioned the group just give us an overview. We produce these products for the OEM industry so the original equipment manufacturers I won't mention who but the guys that you see every day on the construction sites, the digging machines, the forklifts that you see every day on the sites, the, the pallet trucks that you see every day in the supermarkets, we ship those products that we make here pretty much all over the world now. We container ship to the US, container ship to China. We would be one of the three top manufacturers within Europe for this product. How big is the group? All told, in this area, in Ireland, we're a, a crucially important employer. We employ all told about 800 people within the group. We would be the largest employer in our region here in Ireland, which is County Carlow, which are in the, the sunny southeast, as it's called. Um, not sunny today, or whenever. Um, so we're important to the area. We're important to the employment in this particular town. Uh, we have a, a long serving workforce, uh, a small turnover of people. So we try to look after our people well and 
without our uh, our people that can run all of these machines, of course, they're no use to us. So we need to be able to develop our people, not just to run the Victor machines, but to run the robots and put them together. So that's crucially important to us. And is this business growing still? Still expanding. We have an expansion plan for next year for this site. And um, we've just recently opened a manufacturing facility in the US of A as well. You're the right side of the border for Brexit, aren't you? Thankfully we are. And we have, I won't say no exposure, but we purchase only in euro. We don't purchase in sterling. We sell only in euro or dollars, of course, if we're in the US. But we're still going to have an impact for sure uh, with regards to our transport and carriage. And we're hoping that there's going to be seamless borders, of course that would have a serious impact on our business, particularly for transport and carriage. Well, let's hope the growth continues. Thanks for your time today, Pat. You're welcome. Thank you very much.